Hey beautifuls, welcome to our heart chakra consciousness. So, our beautiful heart, the heart of hearts, the heart of all desires, the heart, the place where we feel. Very interesting place to be, right? Let me just pop this up on my stand here. All right, perfect. So, curious how we are feeling at the heart chakra. So let me know when you guys are here. Say hi. The crystalline chakra activations are also available. I'm curious which of you guys have the acro chakra, acro activations. <laughs> the chakra activations already. Hi, Jamie. The chakra activations are the crystalline chakra. Act oh my goodness. Okay, let's just talk about something else for a minute. Can you guys see? All right, I'm trying to point my finger behind me. I'll talk about the activations later. <laughs> See that thing there? It kind of looks like a being. Can you guys see that from, you just did your heart chakra. So I'm kind of, okay, I'm not supposed to talk about it right yet. <laughs> Whatever, can you guys see that? It looks like somebody standing there. It looks like a being. Can you guys see that or is it just me? <laughs> It's actually like just a plant with the certain reflections on it. Kind of interesting, right? Very interesting. Let me share this and then I shall be present with you talking about beings and all of the heart chakra. It's very interesting. Uh, we were talking about it in the Trust Intuition uh, support call yesterday morning, actually, how we've all felt like a lot more beings um, around and the veils are thin and yeah, Jamie says yes. Yeah, it's so interesting, right? Because even like before when I was getting ready, I like saw something out the window. I was like, okay, clearing the space. Thank you. Uh, I feel like the veils are very thin at the moment. And I also feel like, I think I said a while ago, like this Halloween coming up um, is going to be quite intense. Um, you know, like Halloween energy can be really intense. And then we move into November into Scorpio. But I feel like it's like extra or something just because of all the stuff that has surfaced uh, this past few months, right? Totally has been seeing so much lately. So this is interesting, right? So we just did the pineal gland. Uh, I don't know what you would call it. It wasn't really an activation because it, I don't know, like what we did do is decalcify energetically the pineal gland and then we activated the pineal gland like for humanity like that is literally what priestess code number three was in the um, full moon ceremony that we did on friday and it was just so interesting that you know like we did that and as i'd said the other day back in november 2018 i was called to do a global live healing also in my trust intuition a support group and like we did it together and we did it as a team and we literally like healed like healed replaced the heart of humanity because all those eons ago and this went back to atlantis the heart of humanity oh this is interesting we're talking about this okay we're on heart chakra got it i'm like why are we talking about this <laughs> well like we went back to atlantis and the heart of humanity was ripped out and so we replaced the heart of humanity. Now that was back in November, 2018. And then December, 2018 and January, 2019 were really heavy, heavy for people, right? You remember that? Yeah. And, and then like, you know, it, it was really heavy for people, but it was also like Atlantis is rising. Like that energy was so strong. And you know what I, you know, the thing about that is that the truth of what has happened in Atlantis surfaced in the, all this year has especially has been surfacing, right? And it's that 18 month period that I always talk about that, you know, nine month cycle and the 18 month cycle of healing. When we look at what just happened the other day and like, you know, decalcifying the pineal gland of humanity and everything that went along with that in that ceremony was so powerful. And then a lot of people have been seeing stuff, literally been seeing things more so than recently. I'm really curious what happens in the next 18 months due to that. Anyway, let me share this and um, I shall be present with you guys about the heart chakra. And it's so interesting that we started talking about that because of that being that's sitting over there. Um, and like I said, we were talking about this in my trust intuition support group yesterday. And a lot of us have been, um, you know, seeing a lot of 
people, spirits, but not just like, you know, spirits that are passed over, but actually seeing, I want to say like dark entities, but they haven't literally been just, just things like that. Just people sitting there, but it's not like, that's not like a soul that's passed over. It's literally a plant. Like when I actually look at it, it's a plant with certain light on, but people can see that. Right. And, and I want you guys to know when we're talking about, um, you know, being able to see spirit or see signs or anything like that. It's not like you see a ghost standing there. Like we can all see that right now, right? You guys are all using a clairvoyance. You guys are all seeing it. Right now, people might be like, ah, it's just your imagination. It's like, yeah, your intuition. Your imagination is the seed of your intuition. I wouldn't be shutting that down if I was you. You want to be more intuitive? Don't shut your imagination down. <laughs> right? I can see two behind you, one over each shoulder. Ah, is that the one you're talking about there? I just saw it as you said it. <laughs> you went to buy... Hi, Philomena. Went to my crystal shop today and bought rose quartz. Heart chakra, rose quartz, yes. Love that. All right, let me share this in one more place and I shall be present with you guys. Oh my goodness, that sun is so <coughs> hot on my back and my legs. I feel like I should be wearing my um, my <laughs> bathers because I like getting a tan. But anyway, I'm just going to have a short tan and a boot tan. That's okay. I can deal with that. No, nope, closer to the ground. Okay. Can't see what you're seeing but I can see that one. <laughs> so interesting. All right. So when we're talking about seeing, so we're like, Oh, I can see the being. And what happens in our heart is we instantly start feeling. We have feelings about what we're seeing. Whoops there. Right. I'm just going to use that one for the moment. When we are tapping into our clairsentience, because our heart chakra is our clairsentience organ, right? Now, so many people on this planet are sentient beings, meaning we feel. But a lot of people are unconscious to what they feel. They're cut off. So, you know, at the throat, we're talking about um, being cut off at the throat so we don't feel what's in our heart. And when we look at society, most people are unconscious to what they are feeling. And unconsciousness is like that. I don't know. I know the figures change, but let's just work on 70% unconsciousness and 30% consciousness, right? And, you know, that's why when we're changing our reality, it can be really hard for people because this down, right, is actually what is creating your reality through your feelings, through your subconscious, through all the trauma stuck in your body. Or, you know, like if you want to look at a trauma, some people think trauma is like a really bad, like situation that happened in your life. And it can be right. But I want you to take the word trauma and actually reframe it in your mind to a stuck feeling. Yeah. So a trauma can have that negative association with it that it's this like big, great like issue that happened and like something really dramatic, like a car accident or something. And yes, that can be the thing, right? But when you also reframe the word trauma to being a stuck feeling in your aura, you can kind of start to like <sighs> see like, ah, oh, there's probably a lot in there, right? Now, if you went through a relationship breakup years ago and you know, you like just had to like get on with it because you had a family to children to look after and you're like trying to figure out what the hell was happening and how do I do life without this relationship and um, you know, like all the details that go with that, selling the house, divorce, like whatever. It's not really much space to actually process and feel and heal the emotions at the time, unless you're working with a mentor, of course. And so those emotions get buried, pushed down in the subconscious because we just need to, you know, get on with life and deal with it and, you know, and, and function, right? And like manage and cope somehow, right? So there's nothing bad or wrong with pushing your feelings down because our society is like built on like, just get on with it. What are you talking about? There's nothing wrong with you. Oh, there's something wrong with you here. Here's a pill, right? Um, let's shut down those feelings. And so all that like suppressed feelings is actually what's running your reality. Yeah. So like relationships that go over and over and over again, and it's the same thing. It's kind of like, okay, can you actually look at the pattern of where that stemmed from? What relationship comes to mind 
that you haven't actually dealt with the pain of your past, right? Now, it's so interesting. We started talking about the third eye at the start of this live stream and I was like, why are we talking about third eye? Talking about seeing, right? Seeing something triggers a feeling in our feeling body, in our heart, yeah? So when we are actually catching those thoughts, seeing what we're seeing and actually being conscious of what that brings up in our feeling space, yeah? then we can actually look at, okay, so this is the big question, right? A lot of people say at the heart chakra, it's like, how do I tell what is intuition and what is feeling? How do I tell what is an emotion of my past being triggered? And what is the difference between your feeling and your intuition, right? Because this is where people get a lot of confusion in, right? A lot of people come to me and they say, I'm never trusting my intuition again because that led me into a bad space, you know, like I'm never doing that. Now, now, my prime example, right, of what I went through, and it's a little bit of a, I want to say a grey area. It's a little bit, I don't know how to describe it. So I'm just going to use my example for this year, okay? So in February this year, um, in January this year, actually, I kept get getting the message of like, okay, um, get ready, get ready. And I'm like, get ready for what? Like, this is January. Nobody knew about COVID yet. Well, most of the world didn't. Um, and so anyway, I kept getting that message for like three weeks and then there was a big cyclone coming and I was like, oh my God, like, okay, like I'm just staying for this. Like at the time my house was like right next to the beach and this little flimsy old shack thing. I'm like, I ain't staying here for a category five cyclone. I out of here, right? So I put everything in the shipping container and I got in the car and I drove and I drove inland, <laughs> like two days inland driving, right? Now, at the time, the cyclone didn't happen. And I'm like, what the fuck did I have to do that? Like, what, the, what was that about? And there's all this shame and like, oh my God, was that intuition or fear or like, what, what the hell, right? At the same time, I needed the break and the road trip and the shift in energy and blah, 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 blah. So of course it was all meant to be, right? Now, when I got back, <laughs> then like all the, I kept having a vision, right? This is back in February before anything was announced. I kept having a vision of these men in white puffy suits coming around to our house and force vaccinating us. And I'm like, and I didn't tell anyone because people would have thought I was crazy. And talk about third eye and heart again, how interesting, okay? Yeah, intuition, pineal gland, heart chakra. And by the way, our crown chakra, you know, I has to always say like we open our crown chakra and we let the light in. And our crown, when our crown is opened, our heart automatically activates, yeah? Our heart and our crown are in exact alignment of our life purpose destiny, of our heart's desires. Like, because when we open to spirit, our the, the light that comes in is like coming from source, which our heart resonates with source. It feels right. It's in alignment, right? So when we open and we let the light in our crown, it opens, our heart is automatically activated. Okay, then we see the truth and our intuition through our pineal gland, deeply connected to source, and then we're also feeling. So... When I had that, you know, vision of the men in white puffy suits, I, I said to my daughter and I moved, I took us out of like all the rooms and we put all our devices in other rooms because, you know, Siri's always listening all the time as I put my hand in a spider web. There's lots of spiders on this property. Um, I guess that's just being in the bush, right? So, and I said to my daughter, I was like, I keep having a vision of men in white puffy suits coming. We need to get in the car. We need to go. We can't stay here. Like at that time, the US and Canada had already gone on lockdown and I'm like, Australia's right behind it, right? And I kept having that vision. And so we got back in the car with all our animals and we left and we drove south. We drove two days south this time. <laughs> something about the two day thing, packing up within three days and going. I don't know, something about that. And I went on full trust intuition. I didn't tell anybody. I went on feeling it felt right. I went, yeah. Now let's like rewind to December, 2019 for a minute, okay? I'm like expanding my business, growing my business, my heart and desire, my soul's purpose, my, my passion, right? Which is deeply in our heart, yeah? And I was like, okay, how do I break through to the next level? What is blocking me? Like I kind of had got to this like slump and I'm like, what is going on here? You know, and I said to Spirit, I'm like, like I'm willing to do whatever it takes to remove whatever's blocking me from my next level. Like. That's that's what I declared and asked for, right? And then all this stuff happened. So January, get ready. February, went to escape the cyclone. No cyclone, came back. Like there was a bit of rain and stuff, but it wasn't a category five. 
And then the vision of the men in white puffy suits, we got in the car and we left. Everybody went on lockdown. I'm in country Victoria. Didn't feel like lockdown because I'm out in the bush. That's what I wanted. Or I, my soul would have died in that place, right? In suburbia. There was no way that was happening. There were so many factors to me getting in the car, but the men in white puffy, puffy suit vision. And when I went down there, I, it was a little while after that I actually wrote a blog about the real reason I left and got in the car and left is because of that vision. And then all of a sudden people started sending me videos about that happening and then I saw a post just the other day about that happening, right? The men in white puffy suits coming around to people's houses with clipboards and shit and I'm like, wow, okay. The thing is with our intuition and deciphering the difference between are you going from intuition, are you acting from intuition, or are you acting from fear, or are you acting from a stuck emotion, also known as trauma, a stuck emotion in your heart that you buried a long time ago that is being triggered by something you're seeing and it's like, oh, that reminds me of that, right? Like in that, so that that like activates in a way and that's what actually runs all the feelings and emotions and everything again, right? We're kind of like, so whatever that triggered, it was like, you know, like that space around, okay, so that stuck emotion got triggered by something I was seeing, by vision, by some other feeling. It's like, <gasps> that reminds me of that. Like your subconscious, like your brain is always trying to figure things out. Always. Your brain never stops, right? Who, who, whose brain stops? Like, give me some love hearts. Your brain never stops, right? <laughs> so when you can like, you know, recognize that your brain never stops, when you feel something or you see something, your brain automatically tries to figure out what that is, like analytical like brains here, you know, like we're just trying to always solve things and figure things out and blah, 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 blah. So your brain's like, oh, that reminds me of that and that emotion will trigger and then it's like, then all the same like chemical reactions will flood through your body and like you, you're just back in that space basically. You're in a new place in a new space, but the same things are happening because of that, right? Sorry, how do you differentiate between intuition fear or that stuck emotion being triggered, okay? So when I went to Victoria and I, you know, I ended up sharing about the vision and then everyone's telling me the men in white puffy suits, here, look, it's happening, I know, like, and I'm like, wow, okay, yeah. <laughs> like I knew my vision was true, but I'm like, at the time it didn't make logical sense, like does that ever happen in our world? Uh, apparently it's starting to, right? So being down there for three months where I was off grid was the hardest time of my life, right? It was like the most hardest time of my life, that three months. And, you know, in that space with that person and what I was doing, I was deep in my subconscious. I was off grid. There was no power electricity. There's no even running water for fuck's sake. Like, what the fuck was I thinking, right? But I'm not going to go with that, there with that because I had asked in December 2019 to remove any blocks that are stopping me from my next level. And then this like big series of events happened, which was like road trips, filling my heart, like all those things, you know, like I love road trips. I love driving. I love, I love the adrenaline. I love my V8. I love driving my V8. Like there were so many things about it, being on the road with my animals and my daughter, like who can get to do that? I did like, I love it. Right. There were so many heart soul callings about that. Ask and you shall receive. Yeah. Now in my heart was also a big pile of deep heartbreak of when my parents divorced when I was five, when, um, you know, my world collapsed and fell apart because when, you know, my parents divorced when I was four or five or whatever it was around that age, my whole world fell apart, fell apart. That was when my joy was lost. That's when my heart was broken and it's been broken ever since. That's also when I started like, creating these beliefs about life and reality, right? From these feelings that I had that at the time weren't able to be properly processed by my caregivers simply because they just didn't have the, the you know, capacity to do that. And that's fine. Like I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying like, that's the reality that then created from these belief systems from my broken heart. And then, you know, everyone's going through their own grief and trauma about separation. So they couldn't actually be present for me. And so I needed to zip that up and like be a good girl and like try and like do everything I could to make sure that I'm still like, Hey, I'm still here. Like I'm still accepted and loved. Aren't I like, hang on a sec. My whole world's just falling apart. And like, 
And that has created a whole system of beliefs and these beliefs are what create our reality. So when you start doing mindset work and you're journaling and you're changing your reality and you're like, yeah, this is what we're supposed to do. And you know, journaling and positive affirmations and, and you're like positive affirmations and positive affirmations and then, then you positive affirmations and it starts to not feel good. Like you're like, I don't, I don't know about these positive affirmations. This shit doesn't work. Right, because what's actually happening when you're starting to change your train of thought through positive affirmations and writing and blah, 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 is what's actually happening is that those buried feelings, that those, those belief systems and that heartbreak from when my parents separated, actually like this is what for 70% of my body, for 70% of how I am, for 70% of what I do in my life and the unconscious choices that I just do that's just me. What are you talking about? That's just me. This is 70% of that, right? So when I'm like starting to like journal and like positive affirmations, positive affirmations, positive, what, 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 what's this feeling? This shit doesn't work. Why? Because what you've done, right, is you're changing these, these feelings and these stuck, stuck feelings in your body from when I was five. I'm using me as an example, right? have created a certain feeling that then creates a certain train of thinking, therefore beliefs about the world, right? You with me? And so these trains of thought, when you start changing them, these feelings, these stuck feelings that have been creating this train of thought, this train of thought's a new one and it's brand new and it's coming from 30% up here, not the 70%, right? And so you know how people are like, okay, you gotta like feel the feeling of what it would be like to like have the thing already and it's amazing and I'm so grateful that this is my life when actually like this down here is like going, what? <laughs> that's, that's like not my life, like, are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so, Sunny Jim. No fucking way, uh-uh. Now what that also starts to do, even as well as like hitting up against like, that's not true, this is true. Yeah? What that also starts to do is you start feeling this more consciously, right? You start feeling these stuck emotions that have been creating your belief systems and just your reality unconsciously. This is just who you are, what are you talking about? Right, and you start to do these positive ones that hit up against it, and it's like, that's not my reality, you could joke it. And that's when the positive is like, this doesn't work, because this is stronger, okay? From when I was five, I'm 36 now. That's a long time, right? So when we are putting these new ones in, right? These new thoughts, because, oh, we had a spiritual awakening, and so we're gonna do all this visualizing, and this amazing light stuff, and then this, and then we're kind of hitting here, and it's like, <coughs> and we can't get down any further, because all this starts to feel, what do I always say? When we have a spiritual awakening, our crown opens, and the light comes in, it automatically opens our heart. It activates our heart, because the light and source are in the same destiny, and alignment, and passion, and purpose as source, right? And so when we start feeling in our heart, then we're like, this doesn't feel good. And we shut down our crown again because we've had the spiritual awakening and it's triggering all of this even. And then we start doing positive affirmations and it makes it more amplified. This isn't my reality. We start to feel sick or we're like, this shit doesn't work. And we shut it down and we go back to the way we're used to. Yeah. This is big, right? Tell me guys if you're right here. Yep. I started clearing stuff of them. <laughs> I'm right in it when I'm talking to you guys about this stuff. <laughs> Can you feel it? Oh my goodness. Okay. Yep, you on another level. Tammy says, oh my God, I just realized why I've always had a feeling of being unworthy or feeling like a second class person. I always took a back seat to my brother as a child and those feelings have formed my adult person. So interesting, we're talking about the third eye chakra straight on this live stream. I'm like, hey, isn't this hot? I'm like, oh well, we obviously have to talk about it. Why? Because our relationships are coded. Our relationships, third eye, there was one word for third eye, it's relationships, but it's also seeing the truth 
in relationships and our relationships are coded from when we're a child by what we feel because aren't children just the most like, I feel everything and I'm so joyous and some people, some kids are really shy but they just, they feel everything and they're always crying or they're always laughing or whatever, right? They, they're like feeling beings, right? Until we shut it down, so don't do that anymore. <laughs> We need to be comfortable with our feelings, right? But our relationships are coded from what we felt as a child. And if we haven't worked on clearing that out, this is what's encoding your heart and encrusting your heart and is the way you are. And if things aren't working in your life or there's repetitive cycles about that, it's time to look at the truth about what you're feeling in your heart and what's being triggered, okay? So the other piece to that is when I said, you know, like you're stuck feeling and this has created a belief system and then you've got these new ones coming in. So not only is this piece going, <laughs> that's not my reality, you're joking, right? No, this is the truth, yeah? What also starts to happen is you have just unlocked, unlocked and made conscious that stuck feeling. So that stuck feeling, that trauma, all the same language, all the same word, like different words, different labels, same thing, okay? That stuck trauma, that um, unconscious energy, the blocked piece of you, the whatever you want to put on it, it's all the same. It's just a chunk of unconscious energy, okay? What you've also done by doing these positive affirmations, blah, 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 is you have triggered this and it's like, <sighs> dreaming, that's not what it is, this is the truth. You've awoken it. You have just brought it to the light, as they say. You have just made it conscious. This unconscious feeling that's been sitting there running your life. And what are you talking about? This is who I am. Are you fucking kidding me? Right? This is just who I am. Leave me alone. Like, no. Actually, <laughs> that's been unconscious running, right? And now you've brought it to consciousness. Okay? Now, here's the key Thing. This is where I always say people always like give up too soon, right? Or like the hardest when you're feeling like you want to give up and it's hard and like, what are you talking about? This is the truth. Like, no, right? When it's like the hardest and you're feeling the grief and you're feeling that hurt and you're feeling it because all of a sudden it's become conscious because of the work you're doing. This is not the time to stop. You know, when I say when it's the worst, you're about to have a breakthrough. When you're about to give up, you're about to have a breakthrough. That means this is surfacing. It's not the time to give up because what you will do is that'll disappear. This will go back and like, hello, it's like even more like stronger in your reality now because you've just awoken it and then it's like sunk back in and it's like had this fresh vibing of energy and it's like well now it's like even stronger like do you know what I mean <laughs> are you guys with me on this like is this I feel like this is so clear or just I'm like wow this is so awesome this is coming through for heart chakra but this is the thing right okay let me check the comments <clears throat> yes 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 hi Alina Started putting myself first recently, unknowingly beginning my own healing. Yeah, exactly right. And when we start to put ourselves first, we're like, yeah, this is good. And then this is waking up and it's like, no, 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 no. That's not good because blah, 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 right? And then we're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Or we feel guilt. And my guilt is like paralyzing. Do right? you know what I mean? Yeah. Yay. So you're not blocked from speaking on Facebook anymore and you're done with the throat chakra. How interesting. Amazing. Sponges, yes, children are like sponges. Hey, Carrie. So, Therese has always wondered how do I force the feelings, emotions of my affirmations when all I have examples of life is not true. Exactly right. And so this is when, you know, when you're conscious of this now and how it's working, okay? And that's why, like, and this is what I teach in Trust the Intuition is how to deal with these stuck feelings, is how to deal with that trauma. That is what Trust the Intuition is about because when this is here, in your body, okay? I don't need to explain it all, we guys get it, right? For 70% of your being, and that, that's just who you are, what are you fucking talking about, right? Or you might feel clouded or heavy or like, well, I don't actually know what's going on, but I don't, I don't, I know I don't trust my intuition, but I don't know why, yeah, because of all these, right? And so, trust intuition is like the key to like when this is surfacing you've got the tools to go there and be able to like shift it and have the breakthrough and get on track with your purpose rather than the other way right because a lot of people do positive affirmations but they don't know what to do when that stuff comes up right this is where they get stuck and they shut it down and they're like this shit doesn't work what are you talking about that shit's crap like that's where they get stuck because they don't have the right tools resources support or mentor to be able to help them to shift through that have the breakthrough 
have clear intuition and be able to get on track with your life purpose. And a lot of people come to me be, to find their life purpose because I am the life purpose queen. But you have to understand that when you are full of all this trauma, I'm going to call it trauma, stuck emotions, yeah? When you are full of all of these things here, okay? They are just, just as who I am, what are you talking about, yeah? When you have all this sitting there, it's like ha having a brick sitting in your aura, right? And imagine like all these bricks sitting in your aura from all these stuck feelings because our astral body is a layer within our aura. So our aura is like a big bubble and there's different layers within our aura, okay? And our astral body is a, is a particular layer that holds these stuck feelings, these traumas. Like, you know, you only have to go, oh my God, what was that? And eat it locks it in okay so when i say trauma like i said it's not just it doesn't have to be some drastic car accident to be a trauma it can be like oh my god what's that right instantly it's frozen in there okay and this is why having the tools to be able to unblock things all the time because life happens all the time and that happens all the time right so when you know what to do you shift it fast and you keep going and you don't get stuck because you're like oh what's this okay and you keep going and you shift right so when these things are blocking you, it, this, these stuck emotions are sitting in here. You can imagine them like bricks. Well, you can't actually see through a brick wall, can you? So psychically, you can't actually see through that. So you're not actually seeing the full truth. What you're seeing is filtered through your traumas in life. Does that make sense? It's so interesting. The third eye and the heart deeply coming up through this. Okay, let me check these. Okay, so when you said too, like all I have in life is examples of that not true, right? And so this is why having a mentor, right? I wouldn't be where I am today without my mentor, mentors, right? And working with them consistently. Like I'm not just talking like have a session, like yeah, that can help. But if you really want like long-term fast rapid change and actually like move stuff in your life and create the life you want, like be with somebody long-term because the thing is, is that there and not just be with somebody long-term, like a mentor, but be with someone with a mentor who is doing the deep work like you want and living the life you want because they're the mentor that is going to keep working on their stuff not just like oh this is just what I do and like here's what you can do it's like when they are constantly shifting and evolving you can shift and evolve with them too because as they shift you shift because you're in their energetic field okay and this is why I have my inner circle and then you know there's programs like 21 day shifter to get a taste of what that's like okay now Back to um, the examples from life that is not that, okay? The thing is having a mentor and being in somebody's energetic container, which is like one of their programs, okay? Is that you are able to have the examples of how they didn't have that and how they shifted that real time, okay? So whenever you've got something going on, you can go to them and they can give you that example or tool or whatever and shift it and voila, done. Whereas what a lot of people do is they go to the people that pull them down, tell them it's not possible because it's triggering their own stuff, um, like family, friends, partners who are like so, I'm just going to say narcissistic, okay, gaslighting, all that jazz, okay. That's what a lot of people do. So a lot of like black sheep of the family generation, like, you know, breakers, okay, also known as light workers, healers, empaths, okay, they do all this positive spiritual work, this stuff comes up, it becomes more triggered, okay, it becomes more triggered, and then they're like, oh, I don't know what to do, and so because they're upset, their immediate family pattern, history, childhood stuff is to go to mum and dad, that's what we do, as a child, that's what we're supposed to do. But we get shut down. And even when we're adults, the same thing. And we get shut down. And then we're like, shut it down. And then we're like, make us feel worse. And we've got this empathic gift who is like so, so freaking powerful and feels everything and is here to change the world. And it's, you can't do that. And there's something wrong with you. Go to the doctor, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's what a lot of people do when they have a spiritual awakening. They do this journey and they want to share it with them because it's like amazing. And then you start doing the work and it starts shifting. And it's like, all well, this stuff comes up. And then you get that as well. <sighs> <clears throat> makes you feel sick, right? <laughs> it is because you're garring their shit and then you're also dealing with the pain of the past of when that originally triggered and it's like, oh my God, right? No wonder people give up. No wonder people want to commit suicide. It's a thing. That's why I can't stress enough to be around and find your tribe, okay? So my reality awareness support group is my free group. You can 
put it in the search bar in the Facebook search bar, Reality Awareness Support Group, and request to join and I'll let you in. We all get it in there, okay? My Trusty Intuition Support Group is next level, okay? This is where you're doing your healer certification and being able to have the tools at hand to be able to shift that stuff that comes up. It's also your go-to place, right? Unless you're working with me personally as well. It's your go-to place to be able to have that support instead of going to the family and copping it all again, you've got the people who get it. This is soul family, okay? Because when you have that and, and when you say like the life examples that is not true, it's like, yeah, because you're re replaying. You know how we talk about like the recycling of emotions and the moon and it's like, oh my God, they're trapping us here and like, what are they doing? You know, like that is like, you're just choosing to repeat that. But the, the key happens, right? You know how I said to you, when this starts to shift, you don't want to like shut it down or like, you know, stop the affirmations that doesn't work because that just had more like a burst of life and it becomes even stronger. And everyone's like, why is my life getting worse? It's like, well, did you actually clear that out? Because that's your key, right? And that's why being around the people who are also doing this gives you the examples because I guarantee there is someone in the tribe who has gone through very similar to what you've gone through. And this is how they've shifted and moved forward. Right? So when you can choose, it has to be a conscious choice to see the truth about the family patterns dynamics. It's not that they're bad people, it's just what we've grown up in. And it's just that that's the only way, like I'm not blaming them, okay? There's nothing wrong with them. It's you making a conscious choice to empower your heart to heal so that you're not confused with all this stuff because all these trauma stuck emotions come up and you go to them who weren't able to help you in the first place is why you're kind of in this still stuck place, right? But when you can have this come up and have a space, like people are like, oh, I know that feeling. <laughs> this is what I did. Hey, and check me out now, right? Right? This is, it has to be a conscious choice to want to receive that support, which is also a big space around opening your ears to receive, opening to the feminine, feeling safe and comfortable to choose to be around the space where it's okay to be happy. Our heart is where we're happy, right? And a lot of us are taught that it's not okay to be happy, not just from family, but also from general society in like, you know, go to school for 12 years, don't know who you are, go to university, buy a house, get a family, you're sorted. If you don't do that, there's something wrong with you, right? Oh no, don't have fun. You got to work like 50 hours a week. Like, yeah, right? Fun? What's that? A lot of people don't know what fun is. So at the heart chakra consciousness, we are really rewriting fun. We are rewriting fun. Yeah. Because as this like empath, like child in this, like, blah, 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 and as still as an adult, it's so, like immediate reaction as we go to those people because the 70% hasn't been changed. Right. And so you, you automatically go there. You might be like, oh yeah, I need to do that. But then automatically you've gone here, you've picked up the phone, you've gone and seen them. And then it's like, oh my God, why is this worse now? Right? Like, why didn't they say that? I just need somebody to listen to me. And like, they're telling me I've got something wrong with me and I need to go to the doctor and we just go. So because we've been in that fun, it's fun. Me as a little girl, back to my story. Oh, my world's falling apart. Hang on a sec. I need to like, you know, um, Hey, like, I'm still here. Like, is somebody like, I'm still here. Is somebody paying attention to me? Like, what can I do? Okay, if I do this and I'm a good girl and maybe you'll like notice me again. And, and <laughs> I don't, um, yeah, okay. And like fun, what the fuck's fun? Because we've been in these roles trying to like please everybody. And like before my world, after my world fell apart, like, I, I don't know, I, I can't, I can't. I can't. What? what? Because we're not only forgot what fun is, we've been in this like trauma, like space ever since the fight or fight has been flicked on from that big life change, right? And again, I teach the depth of this and trust intuition because this is our intuition, right? If you're clogged up with all this shit, of course, like how can you hear your freaking intuition? Like, right? Are you running off an emotion, a stuck emotion that's been triggered and it feels right because, oh my God, like, this is like where I'm going to like get the love that I need, like ever since. It's a bit intense, right? So not only have we gone through that trauma and it's still stuck in there, but fun 
I've had to carry everybody. I've had to make sure that everyone's okay. What are you talking about me? Who? who? Me? Nah. No, I've got to make sure they're okay. And as soon as we start doing that, we feel fucking guilty because like, oh my God, like, no, 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 hang on. I, I need to be loved first. Like if I do this first uh, and then we burn out, right? So when we start uncovering and unpacking all this stuff, we need to factor in fun. We need to retrain ourselves what fun is. I've gone through cycles of awakenings in my life, right? And you know, before my major awakening, before I first awakened, I was like hardcore, happy, like happy, hardcore raver, like, you know, taking all drugs under the sun, every festival in summer, like I'm there and I'm right up the front and every DJ knows me because every festival I'm right up the front and this is like my position, like, you know, like just, this is who I am, right? That was fun to me. That was my family. That was how I felt alive. When I have a spiritual awakening and I tapered off drugs and I haven't taken them for a long time since then, right? So 2006 is when I graduated. And I think it was when I was in Brisbane. So it was May, was it 2006? No, it was May 2007 was the last time I took cocaine. And I was like, this is fast, you know? Like I was like tapered off. And then I was like, I don't know about this, right? And so I stopped taking drugs. And then I, you know, did all the spiritual stuff and it got really heavy. Cause you know, all this stuff's coming up from all my life. And oh my God, right? It's a lot. <laughs> And I didn't know what fun is because well, if I'm not taking drugs and festivaling and raving and stuff, well, fun, <laughs> right? And the first, the only time I remember fun is from when I was a little child before my parents separated, before my world fell apart. Other than that, I don't know what fun is. So I've had to rewrite what fun is. I've had to remember what brings my heart alive. And it's not that I'll go take drugs and go raving and festivaling off my head like I used to. I still love music. And so it's like taking the bits and it's like, okay. And like sometimes that can take a little while to remember what fun is and what brings our heart alive, right? And what I'd recommend doing is that every time you shift something is to anchor in, okay, what makes me happy? Like, and you might be like, well, nothing makes me happy. It's like, no, there's still grief in there about that, right? So get that out, but train yourself to include and increase happiness, joy, fun in your life. And you're like, I don't know what fun is. And I'm like, did you just hear what I said? You might have to get more grief out, right? But start training your brain to embody more grief. Oh, more grief, oh my God. More fun. Cross that out. <laughs> more fun and joy and make it happen. Yeah, and this is how we reclaim our life back. This is how we reclaim our heart back. And then when we are in that joyful place and we are living our life because it's so damn full and I remember what it's like to be have fun now in a way that fulfills me, who I am now and who I am becoming. And my life is so full and just, I love it. And I love what I do and I love every day of my life because I've actually healed so much damn stuff that hardly nothing comes up. And when it does, I shift it really fast and I retrain myself for happiness, joy and fun like straight away. And because I am in this high vibrational space, my, my life is getting more and more amazing. I'm attracting people who also love their life and who are very supportive and who also love me for me and my, my out there ideas and my big open heart. And, and, and yeah. That's how we reopen our heart. That is how we enable the joy back in our heart. That is how we fulfill our heart's desires and live the life we imagine. Not from all the trauma. Yeah? I wrote this thing, this little quote thing came in before I jumped on live. Um, it says, The rewards of healing your grief and trauma are vast, but it's not an easy road or everyone would have done it by now. So when you see those people living the life and it's amazing and you're feeling really jealous because you're like still stuck over here and it's shit, right? And you're like, <sighs> know that they've walked through that. Yeah. In some way, shape or form, they have walked through that. Right. And they're the people you want to start hanging out with, whether it's just online, whether it's in their inner circle, whether it's, they're the people you want to hang out with. It was really big for me to walk away from every relationship in my life, including friendships who I thought were going to be there to the end, to create the life that I desired. If they were bringing me down, if I was doubting myself around them, if I was, you know, feeling worse when I, you know, would hang out with them and I'm like, oh, I, I chose to walk away from them. That was like the hardest decisions of my life because I'd already lost my family, right? 
but I knew that I wouldn't be able to get where I wanted to go if I continued to hang around them. It's not that I don't like them, it's not that I hate them, it's just that I'm choosing to put my time and energy into other things because I'm actually not yet at the life that I want, right? My desires are always evolving and growing, of course, getting bigger and bigger, but I'm willing to let go of anything that is not serving me so I can have my full heart's desires and be in that joy 99% of the time, yeah? That is a conscious choice to do. And sometimes the biggest relationships we have to walk away from bring the biggest grief and then that grief surfaces again and again and we're like, oh my God, is this going to end? There is layers and at the start, there is a lot, but it does get easier. It does, okay? Because at the moment, you're probably very full and you're just starting and or maybe you like gave up and it's like even more like amplified and so you're starting again. We went back to the situation again and again because didn't trust intuition, but it felt right. But that's even confusing in itself. And that's what I teach the depths of trust intuition. Yeah. Let me check these comments. I, I stopped them. Let me see them. Okay. Yes, I've been struggling, but I keep going. Yeah. And that's the thing. The difference between a successful person. I think I said this a little while ago <laughs> on throat or something. The difference between a successful person and a not successful person is that they did it anyway. They got through the hard part. So they kept going. They didn't give up. Grant Cardone just posted the other day something... Oh, something, I can't remember what it is. Some quotes like, you can never fail if you don't give up. So if you have a feel of failure, just don't give up. Just get back up, dust yourself off, put your damn white crown on. Where's the light? Put your crown on, <laughs> the crown of light, and keep damn all going. Yes. All right, let me check these comments. All right, Aurora says, you. <laughs> yes, Hannah's work is transformational when applied. Exactly, right? Um, even when not applied, you learn you are applying them. It is deep, but it's so transformational. Yes, exactly that, right? Even when not applied, you learn you are applying them. What that means is you are living it in day-to-day -day reality. Yeah, reality awareness. That's what I do. So transformational. It's so deep, but it's so transformational. Why? Because we need to be able to function in our modern day life. We need to be able to function in our everyday, busy, crazy ass, like non, non spiritual <laughs> modern day life that we live in, right? And that is one of my gifts. That is one of my passion, how to make it work for you in our everyday modern chaotic life, right? That then becomes not so chaotic once we clear all this out. Yeah. Thanks, Aurora. I feel touched hearing that. <laughs> so Joy says, still happening in my 40s with my parents. I had to cut the cords. Yeah, it's a thing, right? If you haven't done this work, it's a thing. We're just automatically fitting into that jigsaw puzzle of our family system. Like it's automatic. Why? Because that's where we grew up. So we were born into. Hi, Doreen. I can see why. Yes, like-minded people. Yes. So Fiona says, Ah, uh, Hannah, that is exactly where I am. I've just started a job so that I can pay and have just bought your 21-day program. Yes! So that you can help me step out of this space. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and that's how we do it, right? One of the life purpose rules is do what you can with what you have. Yeah? I would not be where I am today if I didn't do what I can with what I have. Yeah? Because when you do what you can with what you have, all of a sudden, more things that you know you want to do, you do what you can with what you have, you do more things turn up and you're like, oh, I can do more with what I have. Yeah? We keep going. One step at a time. What's that saying? You're not showing the whole staircase, you're showing the first step. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> it's exactly that. Yeah, soul tribe. Yes. Unstuck me. Yes, exactly. Yes. So Tammy says, I started back in February releasing what is not mine and does not serve my highest good. Yes. So many things started leaving my life. Some people I never meant to lose. Yeah, I did. It's very surprising stuff. It is. It so is, right? And and the thing is, is that, you know, there's, when I was, when I was speaking about the friendship stuff before, um, there was like, it was probably like six, seven, eight months even of just no one. Like, you know, I had like two or three friends and then I walked away from them. And it was like good six to eight months of no one. And it was really lonely. And I'm like, oh, my mentor, I'm like, is this normal? Like, who the fuck does this? <laughs> She's like, I did. And I'm like, okay, it's normal, <laughs> right? Because when we're building an empire, when we're changing our reality and actually living from our heart and having that joy and freedom back instead of like this system, when I talk about this system and our family and our parents, it's not just that. It's a bigger, it's a societal picture. It's a societal thing. 
right? So when we learn to step out of that, it's looked at as crazy and not normal because they're stepping outside of this like sphere that that's all they know, right? And that's why you're just not meant to be around them. Like you can be around them. Just don't talk to them about the stuff. Come to our tribe and talk about it, okay? Like you'll fly that way. Done trying to please people. Yes, yes. Hi, Shane. All right, so Fiona says, I've been in freeze for many years. Yes, in the process of unfreezing, very intense. Yes, going down to Victoria showed me what I was, what was frozen, yeah? And that's why I went there. That's why my intuition took me there. Even though it was like the, the hardest three months of my life ever, it, un, it defrosted that, you know? And I said to, I said to the universe, I'm like, said to spirit, I'm willing, I'll do whatever it takes to unblock me, to shift me to my next level. And I did, yeah. Was it easy? Uh-uh. <laughs> no way. Mm -mm. Hardest time of my life ever. The rave times, you sound like me, yes. <laughs> Happy hardcore raver over here. <laughs> Drum and bass trans fan over here. <laughs> my heart, that's my heart. <laughs> Not so much happy hardcore anymore, but. Uh, I love you. I've learned so much from you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sean. Love you too. Same like me. Yes. Yes. You are so real. Thanks for sharing. I totally resonate and I'm in that process of reclaiming myself now. Healing in so many ways. Yes. Yes. So good. I guess that's why I became a marathon run and Ironman competitor. The healthy high. Yes, exactly right. Another thing on that. So another thing I realized on this road trip um, that is really important to talk about because it relates to the pineal gland, the flight or fight that I started touching on. That's where I was going with this. I think of sharing that. I remember as was where I was going. Um, so you know how we're like we're in these stuck patterns and this... Um, <clears throat> I want, to, I want to say the word codependency, but that can be have a negative connotation in the spiritual world stuff as well. But um, the heart chakra is deeply connected to fuchsiaite and that releases codependency, right? So when we heal this stuff, trauma stuff, that's what releases the codependency because of that's all we know, right? Now, when I was driving on the road, like I love the adrenaline, I love my V8s, like, you know, like I love the supercars, I love, I love adrenaline, right? I drink coffee, I, you know, like, and that's the thing. Now, not that any of it's bad, but it was a huge realization because back in December 2019, I was also coming out of, you know, 18 months, two years of building my business of like masculine burnout of like push, push, push. And I'd been consciously working on, um, you know, shifting out of that doing masculine energy into the feminine. Now that doing masculine energy started here as a child of like, please, like, please see me, hang on, let me keep doing more and then maybe I'll be good enough. Like that's where that stemmed from, right? And so when I hit all my goals and I was just like, whoa, like this sump that I talked about, that's also what I was shifting out of, yeah? And stepping into the feminine, receiving more, doing less, um, you know, and being in a different vibration internally because all of this creates an internal vibration, okay? And now that flight or fight that I spoke about, it's also that um, the flight or fight switched on and you know the adrenaline pumping and it's so interesting right with all the world stuff that's come out and the adrenochrome and all that sort of thing like our society is trained from babyhood that adrenaline is normal that flight or fight is normal like that's what us as a society is growing up in and that's why a lot of us have had the childhoods that we have right now when i was on the road <laughs> spirit showing me all these things i ended up stumbling across this show on netflix which i've since cancelled my next since cancelled my Netflix account. Um, so this is before I did that, obviously. Um, I can't even remember what it's called. It was some, it caught my attention because it was something about the music rave scene or something, but it was in Ibiza, I think. And basically, long story short, is like this, you know, young girl, her brother went to Ibiza, left her, he ended up getting murdered, and, you know, but he was like, can you hear that? The green frog, frog, the green frog is in the pipe. This is an interesting timing. The green frog is rhodonite patience. Yeah, so interesting. 
talking about the adrenochrome and the adrenaline and being on the high and go, 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 go. And then the patience, it's like patience. I'm like the most unpatient person, but I've been working on that, right? It's like, it's okay. And like, everything's okay. Like, you know, like changing out of that because when we're in that flight or fight reactive, it's like, um, okay, like we're very reactive. I'm like the most reactive person on the planet. Just ask my family. <laughs> They'll tell you all about it, right? Um, but they don't know this new Hannah. <laughs> Anyway, so back to the story. And, and so that, you know, sorry, the flight of fight, I need to speak to that, you know, in that that's what our society's growing up on is that like trigger. And so we're just like triggered. It's like everybody's just a triggered mess, right? Ultimately, we look at society, everybody's just a triggered mess. And so the frog really like bringing it home around patience and the heart is a slower energy being present in our heart. It's something that most people are uncomfortable about being present. Why? Because it makes you look at your feelings. It slows you down. You step into a different vibration, energy and frequency. And that's why it's hard to let go of that because what is also we're addicted to the adrenaline. We're addicted to that certain vibration. We're addicted to the certain neural chemistry pathways that are fired when those things happen. And that's why everyone's like this. Yeah. And so when we are, in that space for me that movie like long story short and i'm sorry if you want to watch it and i'm just spoiling the story but it's an important story because it was like it was spirit showing me right because i was even questioning i'm like why do i like the adrenaline why do i like the driving why do i like the like big highways and no one's there like why why is that you know and what i realized is that you know as i was talking about the joy and the heart and the dancing and everything like that like before like that um created a certain adrenaline, but it, it's like that covered up the pain and the grief from all of this, from all my life, right? And the pain and the grief and the suffering and like I could take so many drugs, I could like out bucket the boys um, smoking weed, you know, like I was like the life of the party and I'd always be the last one up from, you know, I wouldn't go to sleep, like, you know, I, I was the life of the party, I was the one who would stay up longest, I was the one that I'd do all the driving, like, I just was, right? And so contemplating all that, going back to the movie, he was the life of the party. He was the one that would take all the drugs. He was the one that would fix everyone, right? And it was very kind of deep at the end. It was right at the end when like the realization of it is that he was like that, right? And this might be a little bit graphic, so you might want to tune out, but he ended up like betting one of the things, right? And as they were telling the story, and he actually ripped a tooth out, like off his head and everything, but he ripped a tooth out and it was like this pain, like, yeah. And like the guy was actually saying to the, you know, sister, it was like, he was like, he'd done that much or taken that much, you know, that pain, he had that much pain, he had to have more pain to like be sane to cover up the pain. Does that make sense? And also it's like, well, that makes total sense. The adrenaline, like the keeping on going, the do, 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 do. And that's why everyone burns out, right? Because they're covering up the pain and the big hole and the big gaping hole of like all the grief of their life and the little child stuff and past life even. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, ah, it's deep. Yeah. And so when you are in that go, go mode and you can't stop all you're thinking and you can't like, you know, tap into your heart, like do things to get you in your heart because there's feelings surfacing. Something is being triggered that you're not wanting to face. Right. When I talk about that trigger thing before, something is there that you're not wanting to face. Now, it's so interesting. We just come out of throat. And when we're triggered by our reflection, by our shadow. Right. This is where that shadow tool comes in because this is being triggered and if you're not catching it, okay, like, and what is that person reflecting back to you that is triggering that and you catch that consciously and then it's using the tools and trust intuition to shift the trauma, right? So, oh, okay, let me, oh yeah, talking about the adrenaline and stuff and then the frog and the patient. So when we're switching out of the masculine energy and switching into the feminine and you want to receive more and you don't want to burn out anymore and you're wondering why everything's still like blah, it's like switching into the feminine is a completely different frequency and it's getting out of the habit of all of that. It's getting out of the habit of going to the people that are going to pull you down again, right? It's breaking all those cycles and it's not easy and that's why a lot of people fail doing it on their own. <laughs> but if you keep going, you don't fail, but you need to be around people who get it and who have lived it, who have walked it and who are also able to guide you through it. That's if you want to be successful, so to speak. We could do it on your own. It just might take a lot longer. More fun and joy, please. Yes, 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 yes. Love you guys too. 
Jory says, very hard to walk away from friends after family. What I went through this year, trying to be in that joy now. Yes. You've got a rose court bracelet, lots of heart chakra stuff coming in. You're so welcome, Kerry. So Philomena says, how do we stop going to the victim when we acknowledge the trauma? Um, I'd be working on inner child work, but also working, I know you're in trust intuition, so working with inner child, but also working in the with the tools in module four. So you might wanna go through and just watch module three and four, two, three, four, no, three and four, just go and watch it all so you get an understanding of it and then you can start working with those tools, yeah? Because it's kind of like intertwined. And then also, in trust intuition, you've got access to I see, I see me, I see you, third eye chakra. And in there is the advanced tools. And in there is like the healing diagnostic charts and the flow charts of like, okay, if this is going on for you, use this tool. If this is going on for you, use this tool. So I would definitely go in there and like print that out and have that like as your like little guide next to you all the time because that will help you to use what tools for what, what's coming up, if that makes sense. So Joy says, this is me now, six to eight months, no one. Yes, there we go. In this lonely place, yeah. You have to understand, guys, that loneliness is a very powerful space if we're able to have the support and understand that. So when we look at the masculine do-do-do, go-go-go-go energy that I was speaking about, it's a very out energy, right? When talking about masculine, feminine energy, masculine is the light, it's the bright, it's the out, it's the doing, it's the movement, right? Feminine is the yin. Feminine is the dark. Feminine is the cold, right? This is hot. The feminine is the cold, whole, yin. It's that. It's space. It's not it's movement. It's slow. It's frog. <laughs> Patience, road and art. Yeah? And the thing is, is that not necessarily just the burnout and the adrenaline and the go, 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 right? And all that stuff blocking you receiving your heart's desires. If there's none of this yin, there's nothing to, there's no space for it to come in. Yin, in. No space for it to come in. What do we do at night time? We go to bed and sleep. We're in, usually. <laughs> yeah? Daytime, we're out and about. Light, bright, masculine, doing. Yin, in. Nighttime, sleep, rest, what comes in. Gives space for our desires to come in for all this doing, right? That's why that balance needs to be there. Or if we've been doing this all our life, it's now time to do this. But we still need to do this as well not just one or the other it's both intertwined and it's both at different times depending on what you're doing so Tammy says I'm trusting that the correct people will enter my life at just the correct moment now there is room yes hi Josephine hi Penny so Jenny says I'm seeing the result of parenting from healed a healed conscious space with my 18 year old he's only he only has confidence to follow his path and it's not the usual so he stays away from negative influences yes <laughs> that is the way we change the world baby yes 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 love it all right so tammy says this is making sense because i've always acted more from my male energy trying to fix stuff Ding. and recently i have begun to open up to my feminine energy yes Yes, you know that show. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called, but it's, um, yeah, I really loved that. You know that show? It was interesting if we watched it. <laughs> yes, no worries, Jenny. So Penny says, yes, but once you do, and once you learn that, life-changing, 100% life-changing, yes. I did that to cover my pain. Yes, so did I. Doing pain to myself, yes. And that's, just, that's what we do. And that's, you know, these people who self-harm or commit suicide and don't want help, like they're just covered in that much pain. And this is where I train like intuitive healers how to deal with that for themselves because then we know how to actually speak to someone who doesn't want to be on the planet anymore because it's not as simple as like, go and get help and like call this number. It's like, no, man, you need to speak to them in the way that they understand and get you because then they're going to listen and feel like they're being heard and that is what changes the person and allows them to get on track with their life purpose yeah by doing pain to myself yes balance yes i'm at 10 months single now awesome so lisa says my problem is i have left all the toxic people who are friends and family but now i have isolated myself so much i'm in very lonely i'm in protection mode on my own as protection and this is why i wouldn't recommend doing this stuff without a mentor who you can talk to because when i say leave everybody it's not about leaving everybody and leaving everybody it's about having the right people around you like i've never met my mentor in person but i feel like i know her inside out and she'd probably say with me 
well, I don't know her inside out, but it feels that way. Because for like going on two and a half years now, she's been there. She's been there. <laughs> right? She's been there. And my tribe, Trust Intuition, you guys have freaking been there, right? It's like, I also, you know, like, I also, I've created the space, but I also receive the help when I need it too, right? So this is why, like, not, like, walking away from everyone and not having, not having yourself around the right people, like I said, doesn't have to be in person. I think I've met, like, a couple of my tribe members in person, right? But the rest are around the world, and I feel like I'm not alone because... I have them to reach out because they get me and I say, okay, cool, I can keep going. I'm not crazy. <laughs> no, this is normal. All right, I keep going, right? Wouldn't be here without them. So it's really important that, yes, you walk away from the toxic relationships and everything that's bringing you down, but it's so important to surround yourself with people who get it and do the work to bring joy back to your heart because once you find that joy again and start recalibrating into that space and your purpose, by the way, that is what makes you feel less lonely and able to like, have that sense of purpose right it's not like oh there's nothing and there's just nothing or what's the purpose it's like this is where your purpose can come in in the in space so it's awesome that you have done that and you are in this i want i want to say lonely space but it's a yin space it's a space where stuff can come in okay the right aligned stuff and when you are hanging around the right people with a mentor or a tribe or both that is when you can really shift yourself to the next level instead of just being in protection mode because you're like, ah, you're still in that like, okay, like, okay, don't come in. You're still like in the flight or fight. And so I wouldn't be, you know, I'd be definitely reaching out for support, for help, being around the right people because then you can switch off that flight or fight and not still be in that because you might as well still be over here in a way. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, so, so important. Joy says, yes, I've been forced to just meditate with all the health issues I had to face this year. Was forced to for maybe a reason, yeah. It's an amazing what lockdown has done, yeah. All right, so Kylie says, I'm finding so much peace at the moment. For the first time in my life, I can actually stop, do nothing, and I'm alone, but not feeling lonely. Yes, this is, this is the heart-fulfilled space. This is you connecting back to your soul, and that's what fills the space. Yeah, there's a difference between being alone and being lonely, yeah. So welcome, Jeanette. Is the show White Sands? I honestly don't remember the name. Yeah. So Lisa says, understand, I don't know how to get back out there and trust. Uh, yeah, work with a mentor, someone you can be guided to like that, like through that. Um, because I think the thing is when we leave all these toxic relationships, what we're also learning is our values, what's important to us, which therefore creates our boundaries, which therefore allows us to step into new relationships with our boundaries and therefore keep ourselves intact and not go back in these again. Yeah, definitely a thing. Makes so much sense. Yeah, yeah. So the crystalline chakra activations enable us to activate, I guess like a boundary if you want to call it, right? A system in our every chakra, okay, so the chakra crystalline activations, there's nine of them. Even though we're in heart, you can start them at any point. And as I always say, whatever chakra you kind of come into is the perfect place for you to start because it can unlock the others. So sometimes we're like, oh, I need to work on the crown and we never actually start it. But if you're like, oh, I love the heart stuff. If you go in there, that can unlock and actually open up your other chakras, right? So start where it feels alive and what is interesting you. Yeah, what is like, oh, I'm curious about that. Go in there, right? That's an open door. Uh, and so the crystalline chakra activations enable the activation to happen to hold the high frequency energy that's coming in. So as the great awakening is happening on our planet right now, what is happening is there is a flood of high frequency energy and a lot of people don't have the energy system structure and like physical capacity to hold that high frequency energy. So they're suffering real deep fatigue um, and uh, like headaches or, you know, migraines or anything. It's just like, ah, oh, it's too much. Oh my God, it's wiping me. Like, because it's such a high frequency and if you don't have the correct, you know, systems to be able to, um, you know, like hold that high frequency energy to be able to channel it into our purpose work, into what we're being guided to do, then it's just gonna floor us, yeah? So remember at the crown chakra, and I said it just like streams through if you don't have the container to hold that. So the chakra crystalline activations make sure that through each chakra, which is the main part of our whole physical body, um, is enabling us to hold that capacity which filters into the consciousness of each of the chakras of all the stuff we've been talking about, yeah? So how do we find a mentor? Well, I am a mentor. <laughs> so my inner circle, 
is the most highest level of support. You get access to everything that I've ever created and everything I will create in the 12 months that you are with me. You also get lifetime access to all of that content. But the inner circle is where you have me on WhatsApp uh, 24 seven, any time of day or night, voice message, text message. You also get uh, two 30 minute phone calls a month with me, you get a life purpose activation code, which is specifically channeled through me for you. And this is like the highest level of support. So yes, I have 21 day shifter programs, which is 21 days. I have a 30 day shifter program, which is 30 days. And they're slightly different of what you actually receive in them as well. Um, the thing is with finding a mentor is find someone who is living the life that you want. Find someone who you deeply resonate with and you know that is being able to support you and meditate and ask your soul who is their mentor for me, okay? So that would be how I would find a mentor and I would make it happen and make it work as soon as you get that message because this is the fastest way to shift you, right? So I'm a life purpose mentor, I'm an intuitive healer and I use all these skills and all the tools and like pinpoint what's going on. So you know when like you have a psychic reading with me or something like that and um, basically it's like, you know, I'm like pinpointing all this stuff. Well, that's what you get 24 seven for 12 months, yeah? And in a 12 month container, whew, you shift a lot, right? And an awesome mentor that is. Thanks, Josephine. Doreen says, I love you and his group. You are so special, so, so special. So if that calls to you, please send me a message or if you've got any other questions or this is like totally blowing your mind, give me some love hearts, comment on this live stream or you can share it with someone who you think it needs, um, needs to hear these messages or you can tag them in the comments, send it in a private message, share it on your page and I shall see you guys next week for our solar plexus. Remember we're in heart all of this week and the solar plexus is already starting to be activated which is our power center. It's about taking our power back. It's about stepping out of the victim role and stepping in into the empowered woman role or the empowered king role right this is where we're really able to shift our life so opening our hearts desires and then being able to step into our power and actually do what we're being called to do rather than being shut down and the victim and we're in a cycle Ugh. makes me feel sick <laughs> makes me sick, feel sick <laughs> yeah so joy says i love hannah and this group yes thank you so special. I love having you guys here. So Jamie says, I'm a holy fire Karuna Reiki master. Love healing sessions. Yes. Danette says, can you give me links for your programs? Yes, I can send you a message. No worries. You're so welcome, Philomena. I love you guys heaps. Mwah, mwah, mwah. See you.